Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of Tech Talk Dudes. I'm uh, Pim and I'm here of course with uh, with Ronnie, my uh, my partner in crime. And today we're here to talk uh, to talk about Defender for Endpoint. And actually, in particular, if I'm not mistaken, Ronnie, Defender for Servers, of course, which is at uh, which is what we see in practice today used a lot on end user devices, which can vary from uh, Windows devices or mobile devices. Um, but of course, servers are important to protect as well. And uh, most cases, at least from my perspective, but that's maybe different uh, from Ronnie's perspective, but Ronnie is going to share his experiences uh, within a minute. Uh, we see that uh, there is a different point solution in place for um, the antivirus or EDR protection on servers, or in some cases, even there isn't an EDR um, a tooling installed on the server or active. While that it's, it's still an endpoint and it's still important to do. Um, and sometimes that also brings in different challenges, of course, because servers are simply managed by a different department than workplace, at least for the for the larger organization. So yeah, um, Ronnie, is that something you can tell us a little bit more about? So how can I, how, how can we deal with those situations and which scenarios do we have and how can we can we bring this uh, to a better attention within the community as is today? Sure thing, uh, Pim. Happy to, happy to do so and uh, welcome everyone. Um, as Pim mentioned, um, welcome to this tech talk. Um, yeah, indeed, uh, services are important. Uh, services are also part of our uh, IT landscape. And, and as you mentioned, usually from from traditional perspective, we have different departments which are responsible for uh, desktops, laptops, mobile, and end servers. And there might be some multiple point solutions in in in, in the mix. And yeah, what what would be uh, the best way to keep your um, IT landscape safe and secure, and that would be an holistic approach. Eh? An holistic, from a security perspective, you would have an holistic approach to manage all these uh, endpoints, and not only from a management perspective, but also the fact that um, uh, tracked actors, um, they will cover the entire kill chain. Eh? It's not only uh, focusing on the endpoints, it might be uh, that remove from your endpoints to your service. And that's why it's important that you have that holistic uh, view. And indeed, Defender for Endpoint, uh, which is yeah widely known as an EDR solution, um, is not only available for uh, the traditional endpoints, laptops, desktops, uh, but also for mobile and service. And we are going particular into more details about how to cope with the service, but because there are various options and uh, scenarios, to enable that, and uh, indeed uh, today I'd like to to uh, show you how you can address that with uh, Defender for uh, Cloud, where uh, that will be the management pane to deploy your Defender for endpoint uh, on those servers. Okay. So, so that's that's actually uh, yeah. But does does that mean the so Defender for Cloud? Does that mean we're only going to look at service managed in Azure because Defender for Cloud is of course uh a feature in azure yeah and uh, that's a good one a uh, good question um uh, well you can actually see that defender for cloud is actually uh twofold it's the posture management so uh how does your posture look like your security posture and your workload protection and when it comes to workload protection and, and posture management this applies not only for workloads which are in the cloud or in different clouds like Amazon or GCP, yeah, it's multi-cloud, uh, but also on-premise. And a lot of organizations, they do have workloads in, in cloud, but they still have workloads on-premise. And that's also the, um, the challenge here. And you want to manage both your endpoints in the cloud as well on-premise with a single solution. And that's actually where Defender for Cloud is becoming a management plane for both cloud and on-premise workloads. And I'd like to show you how that flow looks like. Um, more, than, better um, more than happy, Ronnie. More than happy yeah. to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, lucky me, lucky us. Uh. <laughs> I, can, 
I can also still learn from you. So that's uh, that's all, of course, a nice thing. Yeah, we we keep learning, I would say. Well, um, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, this is the Defender for Cloud Portal. Uh, what you see here is the just the, the yeah the starting page, the landing page where you see the security posture when it comes to regulatory compliances, workloads which are protected. Um, but we were talking about multi-cloud and also the integration with on-premise. Uh, I'm going to show you how that looks like. And first of all, uh, we mentioned Defender for Cloud is able to protect multiple workloads. Well, in this case, we are only focusing on service. Uh, so as you can see here, um, server workloads, we have two plans, and that's also uh, good to understand. You have a P1, which provides the default defender for endpoint capabilities, including vulnerability management, and also the automatic onboarding, but you will see also what you are missing. And um, the red dots, are particularly the features and capabilities which are interesting for having server workloads hosted in the cloud. Um, you might be more, a plan one would be more relevant for server workloads which are still hosted on premise. And because just in time, uh, network layer, adaption, uh, file integrity, these capabilities are not uh, available on premises, but can be leveraged if you are you're hosting your service in Azure as Azure EOS, for example. Um, so that is the dis distinction between the two plans. And uh, apart from the uh, plans, um, it's also to good have good understanding how that further integrates. Uh, because Defender for Cloud is the management pane. And as you can see here, you're also able to configure um, other capabilities like uh, vulnerability management, huh? part of Defender for Cloud with Defender for Service is the vulnerability uh, management capabilities. That could be third party, that was in the past, but now these days, if you're entitled for Defender for Endpoint, you can also leverage these capabilities natively. Um, we These days we are also providing uh, a agentless scanning, vulnerability scanning, but that's um, deviating from the topic. Um, so these are the plans. Another important thing is the integration. And why is that important? If you have um, Defender for Endpoint enabled, um, you can check these boxes. Because by default, if every workload which is uh, created in um, Azure, uh, EAS uh, server workloads, with these checkboxes checked, they will be automatically onboarded to Defender for Endpoint. So automatically they are protected and providing the capabilities. Um, in order, uh, so, so if I may say, yeah. so it compared to Workplace where you enable the onboarding in Intune, this is the place where you do it for servers in Azure. Yeah, exactly. And that's not only applicable for the Windows service, but also for Linux service. Yeah. And if you have also other clouds linked, eh? so you're managing uh, all the clouds through Defender for Cloud. You're yep. also able to auto provision uh, Defender for Endpoint and onboarding in Amazon or uh, uh, GCP when you have server workloads over there. That's So that's, that's the cloud side. Yeah, amazing, amazingly easily, easy and simple. So I think, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, I think I need to run some checkboxes in my environment, but that's that's. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you're you're hosting also other clouds, but definitely worthwhile to check it out and make sure that the automatic onboarding is there. Um, another important uh, workloads uh, are the on-premise scenarios, the hybrid scenarios, and that's where Azure Arc comes into the play. And Azure Arc is actually an extension of the uh, management plane for Azure, and it's actually uh, extending. Um, Azure to your on-premise uh, server workloads. So what you need here is to deploy um, uh, an onboard uh, service to Azure Arc. So you can do that by uh, manually, or you can do it uh, uh, automatically by your management solutions. And actually, they are using a script. They are installing uh, the Arc agent. 
And by installing the Arc agent, the server on-premise services will be onboarded. So as you can see here, I have prepared a server which is on my uh, Hyper-V on my laptop hosted, and it's connected. And what you see also here, it's a Windows Server uh, 2022. It's virtual, and uh, one of the benefits of the integration of Azure Arc with Defender for Cloud is that Defender for Endpoint, uh, you might uh, remember that checkbox, that checkbox was checked. And that results, uh, by default, the monitoring agent is installed. So it's not only Defender for Endpoint capabilities, but also recommendations and the posture management I mentioned. And here you can see that the Defender for Endpoint extension is there. And that means that actually Defender for Cloud is bootstrapping the Defender for Endpoint client or the activation because 2022, the Defender for Endpoint client is part of the operating system. So yeah. it's enabled by this extension and that re result that this server, just remember the host name, we are going to the Defender for Endpoint portal. Here you see the assets being managed through Defender for Endpoint and protected. So you can see here we have mobile, uh, computers, but also servers. And here we see our on-premise server, which is managed through Azure Arc and protected by Defender for Endpoint because of the integration. Mm -hmm. And you see the box is uh, active, and therefore you have the same protection and capabilities as we do have for uh, laptops, desktops, or mobile. And that's giving you and producing you the holistic approach, not only from a management perspective, but also from a protection perspective. And and uh, what maybe a strange question, but what is the relation to MDE attached? Because we, of course, did a session together on Techorama. Uh, that was, of course, without Azure Arc and without the Funder for Cloud. But what's now, how, how do, do these two relate to each other? Uh, that's a really nice one because um, the server I have onboarded here is not managed by Intune, for example. To be honest, it can't be managed by Intune. But, and that's really, I really like it because we didn't prepare it. And um, um, because it's MDE attached, eh, uh, we have an additional management channel. Um, so in this case, you will see here the same uh, server, which is on-premise based, on-premise located. And this is another benefit of using Defender for Endpoint, not only from AV or EDR uh, protection, but it allows you to configure security policies. And these security policies can be targeted to your operating systems and your servers, like you do for your other endpoints, like um, your desktops and your laptops or your mobile as you can see here. So it's not only a holistic uh, view and approach from a security perspective, but also from a management perspective. Yeah, yeah. That's actually, it's, it's, it feels like it's really easy. So I got VMs in Azure, uh, use Defender for Cloud. I got VMs on-premises, use Azure Arc, configured with, connected to Defender yeah. for Cloud, and then, I can suddenly manage my machines with uh, uh, within endpoint security um, with an Intune. So it sounds exactly. really sounds really easy to do. It sounds it feels it feels like a few different steps. Well, of course, um, you you need to carefully to plan this and and yeah, that that's that's something uh, how you want to configure this. It's the, I think it's more impacting your uh, people and process because the technology here. Uh, meanwhile, I'm showing some other additional information like security recommendations, the software inventory, which is part of um, the Defender for Endpoint capabilities. Uh, uh, the premium one, the P2, you have also the browser extensions or vulnerable, for detected vulnerabilities on your box. Um, you have the full, full blown uh, you have security baselines, for example, if they are configured and certificates, you have the full, 
full capability set as you do have for your other endpoints, including also uh, other activities uh, like um, initiate live response, uh, collect information, or even uh, isolate a device. Um, so that's 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 really yeah powerful. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. And let let's let's say I'm an um, I'm an IT and I admin watching this 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 episode of us what would be my key selling point to my manager to say uh we need to use defender for service right now in our environment because it offers a single pane of glass but what what would be besides that other great things we we can achieve with that well apart from the single pane of glass you can uh, use the same management uh solution uh, you can reducing point solutions um, and you can also combine your uh, or optimize or restructure your your teams using the same technology and protecting your entire uh, estate. And that's also from a security perspective. It's not only just um, having just a piece of the total uh, puzzle. Now you will see the total puzzle and you see uh, strange behaviors or other things which um, uh, let them remove to your uh, uh, organization or network. Uh, and that that's, uh, allows you, your uh, users, to faster detect, faster to respond, uh, it's easier from an admin perspective, uh, also and automatically onboarding. So actually, what what we are saying today, you can do more with less. Huh? You can do more with less people, with less uh, resources. So that's definitely um, a unique selling point, uh, a key differentiator to consider Defender for Server as part of um, yeah the Defender for Cloud uh, management plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. Um... I'm totally with you on this. Um, well, uh, a short, I think uh, for me a short recap. Um, start using uh, start using Defender for Cloud if you've got service in, in Azure or any other uh, multi-cloud solution. Um, enable those checkboxes. Make sure the right plan is configured. Then enable the checkboxes. Um, and if you are having on-premises service, make sure that you are going to implement Azure Arc and then uh, do the onboarding uh, via Azure Arc. And then with that being said, I think uh, it ends with making sure, of course, the right configuration is in place because just yeah. onboarding those devices is not really, it's it's detecting, but it's not protecting because for that you need to configure separate settings, of course. Yeah, and one other thing to, to if you go back to planning, um, make sure that you are targeting uh, enabling this on the right subscription level. And an important thing to mention is that Azure Arc, um, eh, normally you have to pay for Azure Arc because by uh, using Azure Arc, you can apply policies eh, for your regulatory compliance and recommendations, et cetera. But yeah. Azure Arc in the context of using it for bootstrapping and deploying uh, the MDE extension, it's free of charge. So for that purpose, um, you won't pay extra uh, costs uh, for Defender for Arc uh, in this setting. So that's also worth to mention and that it's clear so that also the expectations are clear on that point. Okay, so that at least saves me a little bit of money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great, great. Um, yeah, I think I, I have nothing more to add. So yeah, I'm not sure if you do, Ronnie. No, 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 not uh, not from this uh, side. I would say, yeah, definitely uh, have a look at it, and also consider this uh, as an uh, yeah, optimizing your your management of your uh, server workloads and keep them safe and secure with with a single solution. And uh, yeah, other than that, it was a pleasure to uh, to talk uh, with you on this uh, topic and. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to many other uh, tech talks uh, next year because this will be one of the last uh, episodes, uh, I guess. Uh, holiday season is almost waiting for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I hope that as well, Ronnie. Uh, maybe we can invite an, 
an, uh, an external guest uh, next year to 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 be a co-host in our sessions. But yeah, um, wishing you all the best for 2023 and um, uh, for, to you as well, Ronnie, as well, and and our watchers, of course. And yeah, hope to see you again next year in uh, watching one of our great episodes with uh, with new features and uh, things we can discuss. Definitely. Um, yeah. I uh, conclude with that. Same to you all. Uh, same to you, Pim. Happy holidays. And um, uh, I wish you already a happy new year. And uh, see you, you next year for another Tech Talk Dudes. Thank Take you care. for watching. Bye bye.